Hello everyone. In today's podcast, we are going to talk about a very interesting growth company named Chromadex with ticker symbol CDXC. Chromadex has been picked for our members at Insider Opportunities and is up by a staggering 80% since then. Despite this fantastic return, we hold it in our portfolio because we believe the stock is still undervalued today and might even tend to 20x in the long term. Why do we believe it has so much potential? You will discover it in today's podcast where I, Robert Delat, founder of Insider Opportunities, am very blessed to have an extremely interesting talk with Chromadex CEO Rob Fried. Be sure to keep on watching because we will discuss how Chromadex revolutionizes the way we age. Okay, so hello investors, my name is Rob Delat. And today I'm going to talk with Rob Fried, who is the CEO of Chromadex, a biotechnology slash e-commerce company valued around $600 million at the stock market. So welcome, Rob. Thank you. Nice to be here. So I'm really, really excited to have you here with us today because we are going to discuss a very interesting product, which you guys sell, uh, named True Nigen, uh, my parents are a customer as well. Um, and True Nigen helps people aging better and can potentially even increase longevity, which is of course a huge thing. So I have performed uh, due diligence on numerous of companies and I believe that Chromadex is like one of the most exciting companies out there. So I am excited to talk about your company. And I'm not only excited to talk about this very interesting product, but also to talk with you, uh, because Rob, you, uh, you have made a very fascinating and a very successful career. And you started off with your business, uh, business administration the diploma. And afterwards, somehow you ended up in the movie industry. And there, in only a couple of years, you reach an executive level. And then afterwards, you decided to start, um, to start producing films yourself. And you actually won an Oscar with your first movie that you created. So that's phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal achievement. Sorry. And then afterwards, you decided to join Chromadex, which is a science company. And there, after a couple of years, you became the CEO as well. So why don't you walk us, th- to begin with, why don't you walk us through your, uh, through your career and how you have been able to achieve this success? Success is relative. I, I work hard. I try to remain focused. I think whether you're working in the entertainment industry, the software industry, or the biotech industry, the fundamental print principles of uh, achieving are similar. Mm -hmm. It's have a vision, have a plan, uh, have conviction, believe in what you do. Uh, And I believe these fundamental principles of building enterprises are applicable across multiple industries. Some of the facts change. There are differences, obviously, between Hollywood and and healthcare. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, But those those, uh, differences come with time and with the right team. But, but basically building a good team, having a, a, a reasonable plan, executing that plan, these principles are the same across any industry. And how have you become in touch with Chromadex? Like, uh, what is the story behind this? In the 1990s, I met an entrepreneur that was working on telomeres. He was working on the science, anti-aging science, a, a, a Stelsem company. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I thought that science was fascinating. And at the time I was in my 30s and I was pretty, pretty much wanted to stay in my 30s. So I began to research the science further and I uh, met with many of the scientists that were working on anti-aging research. I began inv- actually personally investing in some of these companies and also me- meeting these scientists and reading the abstracts of the research reports as they came out. And it turns out that in around 2020, 10, this idea of NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, as a way to manage cellular aging and cellular health, uh, was theoretically very interesting, was also beginning to get confirmed by the the empirical data. Uh, So I researched a little further and found that there was this very interesting science company in Irvine, California called Chromadex that had 
uh, great science and had a, an excellent patent portfolio around an ingredient called nicotinamide riboside, which safely elevated NAD levels in humans. And, the, and all of the science suggested that by elevating NAD levels in humans, you're creating increased cell strength, the cell's ability to manufacture energy and the cell's ability to repair damage as it happens, which essentially is what aging is. Yep. And th I mean, this is how mo uh, most scientists today define aging, which is the accumulation of damage at the cellular and molecular level and the diminished ability to repair that damage. So here you've got a molecule that very safely elevates NAD, improves the cell's ability to repair damage as it happens. So that seemed fascinating to me. And I got yeah, involved sure. in the company. Mm -hmm. I got involved in the company, became very friendly with the CEO and the other board members, eventually went on the board of Chromadex. And then uh, we, as a board, uh, agreed that this opportunity was very significant around nicotinamide riboside, more significant than the other existing initiatives that existed at the company. Mm -hmm. And that we decided to pivot and, and, and actually tra tra transform the company into a consumer facing company that created its own consumer product, True Niagen, as it were, which is essentially nicotinamide riboside. Uh, and, but with that, it would require a, a, a bit of a transformation of the enterprise. It means mean new, new, uh, new investors, new employees, new executives, new, a new strategy, if you will. And that seemed very exciting to me and as a great challenge. So together with the founder and previous CEO and now current chairman of the co uh, company, Frank Jacks, we've worked together as a team to transform the company from- And this started in it. 2017, right? The That's when I joined them. Yeah. Yes. March yeah. of 2017. Okay. Okay. Um, so very, very interesting, of course, the anti-aging subject. Um, so true niagen is one of the leading ingredients in this market, which is sold to thousands of people right now to decrease the effects of aging, such as, for example, getting an older skin, uh, a loss of energy, arthritis, and so on. So this is really a huge market. In fact, it is becoming so important for humanity that the World Health Organization, I have read, has declared this decade to be the decade of healthy aging. And you guys play a, a very significant uh, role in this battle against aging. So could you like explain a little bit more the science behind True Niagen. How has it been discovered before you joined the company? Uh, how does a supplement actually work? And why is this science really so, so promising right now? Well, nicotinamide riboside is interesting because unlike many molecules, not only in the dietary supplement business, but the pharmaceutical biotech industry in general, we understand the mechanics behind it. We, we not only understand what it does, but we understand how it does it. Mm -hmm. when, we, when we take basic biology in high school or in college, we learn about something called mitochondria, which are organelles which are responsible for the manufacture of energy yeah. inside the cell. Mm -hmm. So energy, as it were, in the body is made in the cell. And these mitochondria are fascinating organelles, you know, um, the accumulation of mitochondria in our body represents 10% of our total body weight. There are trillions of them in our body, and they actually have their own DNA. They're fa fascinating. And uh, there are all these theories about the or, uh, origins of, of hum the human species, of the animal species, that at one time, mitochondria may have been like bacteria, like their own separate organisms that eventually merged with the human cell and then eventually became this symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, where mitochondria create the energy and is transported throughout the cell through molecules called ATP, adenosine triphosphate molecules. In order for mitochondria to do what they do, manufacture energy, it requires this coenzyme called NAD. And that was, we all learned that in basic early stage biology. If you yeah. look at the Krebs, the Krebs cycle, Mm -hmm. the energy metabolism cycle, you see NAD, NADH, NADPH, various forms of NAD are involved in the, in the steps along the way of converting uh, nutrients and oxygen into energy at the end of the cycle. Mm -hmm. So we've known about NAD for a long time. 
what, what we learned recently is that NAD levels decline with age. Uh, uh, not only decline with age, but decline with any kind of physiological stress. So it's notable that when you go out in the sun, these skin cells uh, are utilizing NAD in order to uh, offset the impact of the radiation from the sun. So if you were to measure skin cell NAD saturation levels after exposure to the sun, you'd see NAD levels decline. Yeah. And, and when we're young and we have these high levels of NAD, we're able to repel things like radiation or recover from a sprained ankle quickly or, or any kind of a damage. We're less able to recover quickly as we age. And that is in part because of a depletion of NAD levels. So that's a fascinating fact that we've known about for decades. But the other thing is this, this particular ingredient, nicotinamide riboside, which so uniquely elevates NAD levels inside the cell. What Dr. Charlie Brenner at Dartmouth in 2003 discovered is that this ingredient, nicotinamide riboside, which incidentally was first discovered in the 1950s by the father of our current chairman of our scientific advisory board, Roger Kornberg, okay. who was a Nobel Prize winner at Stanford. His father discovered nicotinamide riboside, but it was Charlie Brenner at Dartmouth that discovered nicotinamide riboside elevates NAD levels. That was the breakthrough. But what he also discovered is that when a cell is under stress, it opens a unique pathway which is called the NR kinase pathway, specifically searching for nicotinamide riboside as a way to repair itself. It's crying out for help. It's crying out for specifically nicotinamide riboside. And that makes it unique from any other precursor to NAD, any other molecule you might take that elevates NAD levels. This is the one the cell is looking for when it's in distress. Mm -hmm which is a fascinating fact about nicotinamide riboside, but what we've also shown that it's even at very high levels, very safe. Yeah, yeah, that's very important, so the, of course. Right, so the combination of the, this fact that NAD levels decline and nicotinamide riboside safely elevates it efficiently and specifically when the body is under some kind of physiological stress, the combination of the, the, those facts make for a really interesting opportunity. So by taking nicotinamide riboside or truniagen, you will elevate NAD levels right away within a couple of hours. And what we've also shown is that you actually increase not only the efficiency of the mitochondria, but the number of mitochondria. It increases mitochondrial biogenesis. Okay. So your cell actually has more energy, is actually a stronger cell. But what's interesting about NAD is that it's not only involved in the energy metabolism function, it's also involved in the function of repairing those cells, the damage in the cells. So there are these enzymes inside cells called PARP enzymes. Mm -hmm. um, there are many types and they're widely known and widely researched throughout the biotech industry for cancer research and other types of research. Because what they do is repair damage inside the cell, inflammation, oxidative stress, DNA damage, um, they're there for flagging the damage, repairing the damage, but they are also deeply NAD dependent. So when there's times of stress, you have these, these organisms inside the cell like mitochondria and PARP that are actually competing for the available reservoir of NAD. So if there's extreme stress, there's, uh, stress there's not enough uh, NAD to go around. Ultimately, the cell succumbs to whatever ever that stress factor is. For example... For example, when you get the coronavirus, your, uh, your cells become under an immense amount of pressure, right? Yeah, so we, because we understand mechanistically what goes on with NAD and nicotinamide riboside, when the coronavirus first hit, uh, back in, uh, became publicly known in January of 2020, we immediately endeavored to do a, a, a preclinical study to show what happens when a coronavirus attaches to a cell. And what we showed, and we put the results of that out in April of last year, is that NAD levels declined by as much as 80% within two hours of a coronavirus attaching to a cell. Yeah. Why? Because the cell is fighting it off. We then put out another study in July showing what happens if you put nicotinamide riboside into the solution. And we showed it was, had a protective benefit. Mm -hmm. And we, we, um, we obviously, this is just a preclinical study. This doesn't ladder up to a, a claim but it's fascinating and consistent with our mechanistic understanding of what goes on. And we think it's, pro it's applicable to other infections and viruses as well. 
uh, as you know, in, 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 in Turkey, one of our researchers that does a lot of work on nicotinamide riboside endeavored to do a phase two clinical study in Turkey of symptomatic coronavirus patients, mildly or moderately symptomatic. And he, he completed a phase two study of 100 patients, uh, I believe 78 of whom got a true niagen plus three other uh, dietary supplements, and the other 22 received the placebo or whatever the local standard of care was. And he showed a, at that time, a 30% reduction in the time to recover from those who received this dietary supplement cocktail. He put those, those results out and then endeavored to do a phase three study, double placebo blinded study of 300 patients, symptomatic COVID patients. And he showed a 40% uh, oh. improvement in time to recover uh, yeah. of, to those that took the dietary supplement. So this is consistent with those preclinical studies that we put out and our mechanistic understanding. You have a stronger cell, a cell that's better equipped to deal with a physiological stress like a virus. Okay, very, very interesting. And one of the strengths behind True Niagen is that you guys have been doing a lot of research about it so far with, uh, if I'm right, uh, 11 human clinical studies which have been pu published before. So that's one of the advantages compared to other uh, possible supplements who haven't really shown a benefit to raise NAD levels um, publicly in uh, human, human studies, right? That's correct. And it's 11 published. There's approximately 57 published or ongoing. Oh, right okay. now, I, I wanted and to could, say 26, but it is 57. All right, it's even better. Correct. And you could see a listing of those studies uh, on clinicaltrials.gov, mm -hmm. which is something the US government puts out a listing of all those registered trials that are ongoing. There's also a website called About NAD, which Chromadex maintains but has no direct connection to True Niagen as a product. It simply puts out all the studies, preclinical and clinical studies as they happen. So it's a, it's a good website summary of all of the mm -hmm. research that exists on, on, on NAD. Yeah. So the, the, the most important study perhaps is the, uh, the one which really showed uh, the impact of dosing uh, patients with NR, the impact of on NAD. Uh, I have the numbers here with me. So uh, 100 milligrams of NR increases NAD by 22% in two weeks, 300 increases NAD by 51%, and uh, 1,000 milligrams increases the uh, NAD by 142% in two weeks. So this is really, on paper, uh, a very good study which shows that, indeed, uh, it is clinically proven that uh, true niagen raises NAD. And these studies also show not only that they raise NAD, but they take it several steps further. They also show an increase in ATP, you know, the energy molecules and, mm -hmm. and, and as well as PARP enzymes and mitochondrial enzymes. And now you're seeing studies showing uh, a connection to actual uh, conditions or indications, you know, yeah. well, okay, I have elevated NAD, I have elevated energy. Should that ladder up to an improvement in in, in, in some either a disease state or in some other structure function type claim. And we're seeing those as well. We're seeing great uh, benefits in heart health, in liver health. We have studies coming out related to brain health. Mm -hmm. There are studies ongoing on inflammation. Uh, we're, you know, we're, there, it's a whole host of things. It's, it's when you're in, it, it, all cells have NAD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, you know, so that makes it so fascinating, right? It can help you with a lot of things. Right. So, so I, for example, one? take it, I take it every day, but I increase my dose when I notice some sort of physiological stress mm -hmm. or so, if I didn't sleep well or something like that, or exposed to the sun. Yeah. So which one of these 50 or more studies are you like the most exciting about to see uh, the impact the impact of NR or true niagen on uh, several disease, age-related diseases. So which one are you really yourself the most excited about to see the outcomes and why and when can we expect as an investor uh, when this will be published? 
it's difficult to say which one I'm most excited about. There are several that we are paying close attention to. There's a University of Washington study on cardiovascular inflammation. There's a study in San, in San Antonio being conducted on cognitive clarity or blood flow inside the brain. We're excited about these brain related studies. Mm -hmm. There's a phase two clinical study on fatty liver going on right now. We have very, very strong data. In fact, that Turkey uh, researcher who did the cocktail study on COVID also put out a study on fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and showed a benefit there. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited on these fatty liver studies that are ongoing. Uh, that we think of a, a benefit. There are several COVID studies that are underway that we're interested in, uh, not just for COVID per se, but what it implies for infectious diseases and viruses in general. So there are a number that we are keeping our eye on and are excited. Now, what's one thing that's interesting about these studies is we have a program here at Chromadex where we supply the ingredient, but don't finance the studies. So the researchers from these institutions or universities approach us generally and are, are interested in conducting these studies. And there are now 225 of them that have either uh, taken place or are ongoing. And, uh, you know, the, the, most of these, these studies cost, you know, any, some of them could cost, you know, one or $2 million. Some mm -hmm. of them cost one or $200,000, but on average, they cost several hundred thousand dollars. 225 studies represents could represent over a hundred million dollars of research R and D that's not really at all reflected in the value of Chromadex. Yeah. But the, we we get this benefit because um, of the intellectual property we have on nicotinamide riboside and the extreme interest the biochemistry community has on studying the ingredient. Mm -hmm. It tells a lot about the potential of true nitrogen, right? That all these scientists are looking to do these studies because they are so excited about this product. Correct. And these are scientists from some of the best research institutions in the world. Okay, great. Um, so for those, for the readers, uh, the listeners and the viewers who are interested, so you can find True Nigen uh, on the truenigen.com website or on Amazon, you said it as well. So who would you recommend taking it? Because uh, so uh, uh, aging impacts the uh, levels of NAD. Uh, you have all these stresses which impact uh, the levels of NAD, for example, um, exercising, uh, drinking, eating too much. So when do you believe it is getting really interesting, interesting in at what age to start taking Trunigen? My college age kids, sons, take Trunigen if they stay up too late, if they party a little too much. <laughs> uh, they work out too much if they go in the sun uh, they don't take it every day but they do take it when they stress their bodies uh, there are numerous serious athletes college level athletes and professional athletes who are in their 20s and some even in high school who take it when they are pushing their body when you work out you're essentially damaging mm -hmm. many cells red blood cells and other types of cells um, so these cells have NAD, uh, many of those cells, muscle cells, there are interesting muscle studies going that have been published and are ongoing presently as well. So we think there's a lot of muscle benefit. So you're seeing athletes in their 20s taking it, many professional athletes and teams. There are teams that routinely give doses of Trunage to their athletes every day. Mm -hmm. And some on the bet, you know, professional level football you know, championship level football teams, basketball teams, baseball teams, hockey teams, soccer teams, rugby teams, world globally are, ta uh, uh, are taking true knowledge. And, and in fact, there are uh, some, some of these um, physicians that work in that in the sports field give true knowledge into their athletes when they're injured. Now they, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we know this because uh, we get these phone calls and we, you know, in some cases sell it to them or supply it to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you age, the, obviously the depletion of NAD uh, increases and your need, you know, you know, we, we say when, when you sprain your ankle in your twenties, you recover in a few weeks and then you're back out on the field, the pitch or the court in a couple of weeks. But if you mm -hmm. sprain the ankle in your sixties, it could lead to arthritis. Yeah. Uh, and part of that healing ability, that recovery ability is related to the cell's ability 
to heal and to recover. So obviously the older you are, the more important it becomes. Uh, you know, as we age, all kinds of things start begin to go wrong. It's not only physiological, it's also cognitive and mental. And so, um, but, but I think people should take it in earnest when they, you know, in their thirties. Uh, you know, there's some good data about the quality of, of, of female eggs. The, you know, the egg cells also have NAD and there's data to suggest that perhaps you can improve egg quality by elevating NAD by taking true niogen. There's, there is a lot of very strong data of, around lactation and mother's milk. That nicotinamide riboside is found in milk, in uh, trace and mounts in milk, in, in mother's milk. It's in some ways is the elixir of life, nicotinamide riboside. So we think that, um, uh, that a mom who has recently uh, you know, delivered uh, there's there's preclinical animal studies that show that uh, pups that receive nicotinamide riboside through the mom actually are uh, healthier, larger uh, animals with actually larger brains. And we oh. we also there's also data to suggest that the the mom loses the baby weight quicker. So these are uh, so that would suggest in your 30s as well for females. Mm -hmm. And then obviously I think it increases from there. Yeah. Okay. So your your target audience is like the customers you are you are focusing on is the older uh, people and the people who are uh, working out a lot. Uh, is it correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's perhaps start talking about the financials and the marketing right now. So. Chromadex has been growing very nicely over the past years since you have started pivoting towards true niogen. Uh, your sales have increased by an annual, annual growth rate of around 40%. And um, last year, you reported around $60 million in sales. You are still unprofitable as a company today, but you have very nice gross margins of around 60%. So in the future, you should be able, as you scale, to become a highly profitable company, I believe. Yes, I would agree with that. I think one of the reasons why we're still not profitable is because there are infringers on our patent. Mm -hmm. So we spend a fair amount of money on legal and litigation to protect the intellectual property. There are people, some blatantly just ignoring the patent or... Mm -hmm. There, there's even a customer who at one time Chromadex supplied the ingredient to and never paid for it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, the, and then, you know, as more and more people become aware of NAD and the benefits of nicotinamide riboside, you're, in, you're seeing an increasing number of people trying to jump into the space. So we've invested quite a bit of, uh, in our intellectual property and in protecting our intellectual property and letting the world know that we've got a very deep, strong patent portfolio. Mm, it's sure. much stronger than people even realize. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's a deep patent portfolio that should last a very long time. But we know that there are people that are gonna jump in. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, 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 but fewer and fewer as they realize that what we have is, is the real deal. Uh, but if you took the legal out, we were pretty close to break even last year. Mm -hmm. So this more about, let's, uh talk a little bit more about this patent portfolio. So um, I've read that you guys have patents which last until 2026, 2027. Um, is that correct? Uh, how long do you believe your current patent portfolio should provide you the exclusivity rights on uh, true niogen? Um, I, we think the total portfolio probably is probably good for another, maybe close to 20 years. Oh, okay, that's a lot longer than I suspected. Well, you're referring just to the Dartmouth patents. You know, as I said, Dr. Charles Brenner who is the inventor, the, discover, the one who discovered that nicotinamide riboside elevates NAD levels and discovered that unique pathway. Mm -hmm. And that was done at Dartmouth in 2003, and we've licensed those patents. And they, they have, you know, maybe five years left. But beyond that, there are many... Uh, crystal morphology patents, process patents, and method of use patents uh, that have been issued either to Chromadex or other companies from whom we've licensed or created exclusive relationships with. It's a pretty deep patent portfolio. You're, you've only read about that because we've used that patent to sue uh, one particular company. 
yeah. who uh, who's infringing on the patent. But there's there's more that okay, okay. they and others are infringing on. Okay, very interesting. And it's very a good idea of you guys to really focus on these patents to protect future sales from all these infringers and all these competitors, right? Because many, many businesses know the real potential of Trunagen and of course they are going to try to, uh, to win these uh, patent battles. Yes, and I mean, it, where, there's, where there's money, there is greed. Yeah. <laughs> This yeah. is basic human nature. You know, I was looking up just out of uh, sort of intellectual curiosity the other day, how many federal US federal regulations and statutes exist? And it's something like 300,000. Okay. Uh, 300,000 ways to break federal law. And the reason why I, th I think that's interesting is just it's basic human nature to for, for many people to just cut corners mm -hmm. uh, and, and try to take what others have, you know. This, this is an unfortunate fact of life, and it is what it is. We don't expect it to end anytime soon because NAD is an important thing. We're open to doing business with companies. We have a great partnership with Nestle. We have a great partnership with Watson's. We have other great companies with whom we are working or hopefully will soon be working. Um, we're open. We think it's very, very important to get nicotinamide riboside or Truniagen out to as many people as possible. We genuinely believe it improves human health and we think mm -hmm. it improves animal health. And, and uh, so we, we wanna get it out there as much as possible because we think there's a, a benefit. The, uh, the, the patent laws exist because Chromadex has invested the time and energy and money to get to this place, this commercialization place. And our investors who were patient and uh, have invested their capital in, in Chromadex deserve to get a, a payback mm -hmm. uh, for that investment. And that's why patent law exists. Uh, also, we understand NAD better than anyone else in the world. We understand nicotinamide riboside. And there are companies out there who cut corners and what they put out in the market gets around the regulatory requirements for safety. Mm -hmm. So we think as long as we're at the sort of central, at the vanguard of what goes on here, that you'll have more people getting it safely, done in the proper way, uh, and we, we consider that a big part of our responsibility. Yeah, when you talk about like these companies cutting the corners, so the FDA is well known to be uh, a very good regulator for these uh, drug-related companies, for these uh, therapies, but in the supplements markets, um, it has not always been that great of a regulator. Have you seen this like evolve over the past years? Uh, so how is your relationship currently with the uh, FDA to, um, about your patents? Well, our relationship with the Dietary Supplement Division of FDA is extremely strong. I anecdotally recently heard that the recent head of the Dietary Supplement Division has described Chromadex as the prototype for how he wishes companies behaved in the dietary supplement industry. Okay. We, we play by the rules. They have a, uh, there is a, a thing called a, an NDIN, new, diet, new Dietary Ingredient Notification, which is a requirement for any time a new ingredient emerges in the marketplace that you apply for and receive it that proves uh, safety. And Chromadex has done that now twice on nicotinamide riboside. The other, the, the, the companies that are out there selling ingredients that claim to elevate NAD or even claim to be nicotinamide riboside didn't even bother to try to get the notification for the FDA. They just ignored it altogether. It is a shame, but uh, it's not the way we work. If you, if you buy a product from Chromadex, you can feel very comfortable that we went through a rigorous process to make sure it is what we said it is and it's safe. The FDA Dietary Supplement Division is a, very, is a very competent group of people who are very earnest about what they do, and they do a great service to the American people by uh, endeavoring to make sure that what people sell is what they say it is, but they, they're pretty underfunded. So it's very difficult, it's very, it's very difficult for them to uh, enforce uh, the, their own rules. And I think that that has been improving over time. There are other countries that are there. Those the comparable divisions are better funded. Canada Health, for example, Canada Health has a larger budget 
in their dietary supplement division than the U.S. dietary supplement division, okay. which is interesting. Yeah. The European Food Safety Authority, the European Food Safety Authority, is outstanding as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, we've also applied and received regulatory approval for them on Trunigen and on nicotinamide riboside, and they complimented us on the dossier that we presented to them. Uh, also Canada, also Australia. I mean, we, we, this, is, this is a strength of Chromadex and always has been for the, for the last 20 years. Getting into the consumer facing industry is new for us. It's only the last three or four years. But for 15 or 16 years prior to that, this is what we specialized in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so it remains the key core competency of the enterprise. I, it's unfortunate that, uh, that, the, that there are many in the dietary supplement business that endeavor to cut corners this way. Uh, but it is what it is. You know, I think that customers who take dietary supplements are important. Taking the eating the right foods is important, and it's important for people to try to take the time to learn the company the, the companies from whom they're purchasing. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't just be a flash in the pan enterprise. It should if if it's really just a marketing enterprise that is trying to create the impression of science. Mm -hmm. I would take a second look. Yeah, sure. So. Let's start. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the future potential of Trunagen. So, as we have said before, Trunagen, you really started focusing on it uh, in 2017. So, it's a relatively new product on the market, or you you have expanded your uh, your focus on Trunagen uh, relatively a, a couple of years ago. So. The 60 million in annual sales is, is a great achievement, but I feel like there is still a lot of potential uh, when you look at the scientific value of Trunagen, when you look at the, um, the supplements market, for example, in the United States is worth 50 billion. So, um, so there is a chart. I know if you have heard about it so far, probably you do, which is the production uh, adoption curve. The first ones who buy a new product on the market are like the innovators, the early adopters. And then you start growing to the early majority, the late majority, and then you stop at the laggards. So I feel like Chromadex currently is more like selling to the innovators, to the early adopters. So really the, the beginning part of, of, of the, the production adoption curve. And one of the toughest steps for, for new products on the market is to cross what they call the chasm, like going from selling to innovators and early adopters who are very excited about your product, like me, for example, to selling really to the mass market, to the majority of people so that everybody knows it. So do you agree that, that True Niagen is currently sold more to like more like in the uh, in the stage of innovators and early adopters and has your team developed a strategy to like cross this chasm and 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 um sell through niagen to to the mass majority of people uh, in the future and when do you believe you could actually achieve this yes i do agree the a percentage, I believe I saw a stat recently that the percentage of existing True Niagen customers that have an advanced graduate degree is about 40%. Okay, that's fun. Okay, interesting. And the average income level is very high as well. Mm -hmm. So yes, clearly the bulk of the existing consumer base is a very educated early adopter type of customer. Yeah, okay. And yes, we are developing plans to reach the next level. We recently announced a deal with Walmart so that we are going to, it was, an, it was initially announced we were gonna be in 3000 Walmart stores in June. It, they've now increased it to 3,800, but they'll be in 3,800 stores uh, starting in, in, in June of this year. Yeah, it's a great uh, deal, right? I, I mean, it, I think it's a great deal. I mean, Walmart is is the, the greatest retailer in the world in terms of revenue size and how they've transformed the world. Mm -hmm. We already sell very, very well on, on Amazon. Uh, there are many customers that uh, go to Walmart and um, I believe uh, would be interested if they knew about True Nigen. So part of that is to make sure that we 
step up our marketing efforts to increase awareness mm -hmm. uh, and not just target that uh, the early adopter crowd. Yeah. So this is part of our this is part of our thinking. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And I believe that perhaps the recent study about, um, about the effect of true niagen on, um, on coronavirus, that this would perhaps increase uh, the awareness of consumers about true niagen because it's, if I am right, true niagen actually combined with these other molecules uh, improves the uh, improves the patients almost as, as much as Gilead's um, remdesivir does, has shown in its trials. So it's a very, very strong achievement and everybody knows about remdesivir because it has been in the news so much, but somehow I believe Trunagen hasn't really reached all these people or did it, I, I don't really know. Uh, so has this also together with Walmart, Walmart been a big thing to, to really reach the mass market or how do you view it? Well, the regulatory requirements are fairly clear that if you want to market your product towards a disease like coronavirus, you need to apply for drug status. Mm -hmm. And we are not a drug, we're a dietary supplement. So we are prohibited from marketing true niagen to the general public for coronavirus. Whereas remdesivir obviously has the right to do that. Mm -hmm. So it is, it, 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 is, it is hard and probably unlikely that we will be able to reach general public awareness level as a treatment for coronavirus. We, we haven't applied for a drug, and so we have not earned the right to, uh, to make that claim. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, you're right. Uh, based on that one uh, phase three study out of Turkey, the results did seem uh, to compare well to the remdesivir phase three study. But these are different studies. These are different countries. These are different protocols. And obviously one applied for drug status. And at this point, that cocktail that included true niagen has not applied for drug status or has not received drug uh, approval status. Uh, I guess it's theoretically possible that they could, the biotech company that financed that study. Mm -hmm. And if they were able to uh, receive drug status, I think you probably would see an increase of awareness of true niagen and that cocktail in general in certain regions as a treatment for coronavirus. And yes, the deal with Walmart is an effort to create broader awareness, but we still have the requirements from the FTC and the FDA about what we can claim about it. And we, because we're a dietary supplement, we can only make claims on uh, what they call structure function claims, uh, heart health, brain health, liver health. I'm sorry, that's my wife. I know we're uh, live. No problem. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, uh, okay, uh, um, we are we're up in the mountains right now, so <laughs> for a couple of days. Yeah, okay. uh, so you know we're limited in what we can say and how we can say it. So. Uh, uh, but we, but within those guidelines, you know, Chromadex True Niagen does have quite a bit that it can say based on the research and the studies that have come out. Mm -hmm. So we think that the overall market potential, yes, is, is fairly significant. Okay, great. So over the past years, you are, that's really your, your goal over the, over the coming years to, to achieve, uh, to, to, to change the current customers the innovators, the early adopters to really the mass market. Is that really the biggest goal of Chromatics right now? Like this marketing, uh, based on marketing? The, 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 look, the mission, the Chromatics's business plan is to build a global brand. Uh, from a larger standpoint, we think that nicotinamide riboside improves the health of animals and people. And so from a larger standpoint, we think we could have a real global benefit to, to human health. And aging is a big deal. I mean, you go to certain That's populations in the, country, in the around the world, Japan, China for, in particular, where you see a real aging population and, and, and health becomes a real issue. Age-related health issues becomes very important to those societies and to those economies. And 
there are many fascinating approaches in the biotech community towards dealing with uh, uh, age, aging, physiological aging. Many of them are really uh, incredibly interesting and are likely to work in the long run. Mm -hmm. These gene therapies, these nanotechnology approaches, the cell senescence approaches, these are really fascinating approaches. Uh, but true niacin is something you can do today. And we believe that elevating NAD levels improves the way the body ages. Mm -hmm. So this is an actionable thing that you can do right now. We happen to be a dietary supplement. So we exist alongside many products that do very little. You basically take them and pee them out. They're basically marketing organizations. We're not that. Yeah. We think that, that there's, real, there's real substance here. You don't pee it out. It has a you know, it has an impact on the basic, you know, biology of the cell, on the homeostasis of the cell. It's, we, we've shown that it does something. And the thing that it does has a benefit. So our mission is to get it to as many people as possible. And many people shop at Walmart. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to make the deal there. Okay, thank you. Um, so some very interesting numbers right here. Um, so we have talked already about uh, your company being backed by these big corporations like uh, right now Walmart. You have the um, you have uh, Nestle, which is backing you up. You have uh, the big pharma retailer Watson Group. But what most investors and most uh, most other people don't know is that your major shareholder right now is Lee Ka Singh. And for those who don't know Lee. Uh, he's uh, one of the world's richest people uh, on the planet with around a net worth of $30 billion. And he became the biggest shareholder, if I'm correct, of Chromadex in 2017. And why this is so fascinating is that Lee has, has a very successful trajectory, track record of uh, investing in um, very strong early companies, uh, early adoption companies like you guys. For example, their investment, I, I have data here, their investment in, in Zoom in 2013 uh, from 8.5 million is worth 10 billion today. Uh, they invested 120 million in Facebook and this currently has a value of 6 billion. And more recently, they invested in a similar company as you guys. Uh, which is an energy drinks company Celsius. Uh, and this turned from 40 million in 540 million right now. So they, they have a really great track record. And it's, I hope you guys will see the same returns in the long term. Well, they have a lot more than that. They're also one of the largest and earliest investors in Siri and in Spotify. They yeah. are one of the largest investors in Impossible Foods presently. Yeah, uh, I, I've had to feel be, great to be to have him as a shareholder, right? Well, he's an exceptional uh, man and individual, and we feel extremely fortunate to be in business with them. There is he has a partner, uh, an investor named Selena Shao mm -hmm. uh, in Hong Kong, who doesn't really get uh, enough attention. She is one of the most exceptional people and investors that I've ever met. Mm -hmm. um, she, she makes the job of CEO easy. Uh, you know, she's one of the very few investors that I've ever worked with. And it's not just Lena, it's her team as well. Uh, that every conversation is what can we bring to you? Every conversation is how can we help you? And it's not just the words. They then follow it up with action. Uh, and uh, it's, 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 it's never a conversation of how can we do more? How can we make more? How can we benefit from you? It's always the reverse. And therefore you see all of these companies flourishing under their investment. And it's a great lesson in, in, in investing. And it's, it's consistent throughout life. You know, the more you, you know, what is, the, what is the key to bringing happiness in life? At the end of the day, we are happiest when we share with others. Uh, what is the best way to sell a product? Oh, clearly the best way to sell a product is to listen more and speak less. Mm -hmm. Always it's a counterintuitive. And, and you see them acting in this um, philosophy as investors. Uh, their investment philosophy is how can we give? 
uh, not what can we get. And, and so they have made it uh, pretty easy for us and all those other companies to flourish. Obviously not every company does, but their success rate is extremely high. And I, I believe it's because of the investment thesis and the investment philosophy. So and Mr. Lee is obviously a terrific uh, man and we feel very fortunate and gifted to be in, this, in business with that, with that group. Okay, great. So I expect the same returns from Chrome Index as from Zoom, right? <laughs> in the long run? Well, I try not to give expectations. The only <laughs> thing I can tell you is that we have a great product. We have great intellectual property. We have very, very good team. We may not get there as quickly as some people like, but we're very confident that we will get there one step at a time, brick by brick. Yeah, I love the long-term vision of you guys. You're doing really great uh, on that part. So uh, then I would like to, to, make, to, to end this interview with one personal uh, last question. So what is your personal goal as a CEO of Chrome Index? So what are you looking to achieve in the long run right now as a CEO? Well, I, I think about the customers of Chrome Index and I think about the employees and the investors of Chrome Index. So there are many people whose lives are touched by the enterprise of which I am fortunate enough to be running today. Mm -hmm. and, and my goal is for all of those who spend time connected to Chromadex, either as a customer, as an investor, as an employee, to get much more out of that experience than they gave. Okay, that's a, that's a great goal. A great thing to end with, I think. So then I would like to, to end this very interesting podcast by thanking you for your time and wishing you the best of luck with your company. Um, so really, thank you for being with us, Rob. Thank you very much. I appreciate the invitation. Okay, thanks. <laughs>